thrilled to be here today. I've got lots of exciting information to share. So let's just get right down to it. What I do want to make you aware before we get started is that this is part one of a series that's going to last for four episodes. We are going to be talking about everything you need to know to get started homeschooling high school. So if you are somebody who is homeschooling high school for the first time because you've pulled your kid out of public school due to COVID, in other words, you've never homeschooled before in your life, then this will be great for you. If you're somebody who has been homeschooling for a while, but this will be your first time to do high school, then this series will be great for you as well. And hey, if you've already been homeschooling high school for a while, this still would be great to listen to, to make sure that you haven't missed anything or to fill in any gaps so that you can feel confident going forward. Today's episode will be about your state homeschool law. Very important. Next week, we'll be talking about goals and how to meet them. In other words, what is your kid planning to do after high school? Or does your kid even have an idea? We'll be talking about how to make sure that you prepare them for that. The third part will be about credits and graduation requirements and all of the nitty gritty there. That's going to be a good one. And then the fourth part will be about choosing curriculum, how to narrow down from all the options out there. And I think it's going to be a great time. So let's jump right into talking about your state homeschool law because This is the most important thing that you need to know about homeschooling high school. It is absolutely, without a doubt, you need to know this or else. Don't even bother. That's how important this is. And that's why I'm bringing it up in the very first part of this series, because I cannot talk to you about anything else. We cannot discuss anything else. There can be absolutely no other advice given. If you don't know your state homeschool law, then that's a big problem. (laughs) So the very first piece of research that you want to do, even if you're just thinking about homeschooling high school, is to look up your state homeschool law and to know what it says and to make sure that you can do what it says. Because this is the law we're talking about here. We have to follow the law. We can't just go into homeschooling high school blindly thinking we can do whatever we want. We need to know what the law says about it. And there is a specific law for homeschooling. And that is the first piece of information to know about your state homeschool law, that it is indeed completely separate from anything that the public school is doing. There is a separate law for homeschoolers. You do not have to follow your public school education law. And I want to make that very, 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 very clear (laughs) because so many people who start homeschooling high school think that they need to follow what the state public schools are doing or what their local high school is doing. And you absolutely, utterly do not. In fact, it's an exercise in frustration to try to do that. I did look at that when my oldest was going to be in ninth grade and I got scared just looking at everything that they were expecting my kid to do during the high school years. But in our homeschool, I was going to try to do those. No, you have to remember, it's a completely different setup in the public school system. And they have the capacity to do all those things that they are requiring that your student does. But here in the homeschool, it's a completely different story. And you don't always have the capacity to do the things that they're requiring of the public school students. So don't look at it. Don't even use it as a guide. I hear that all the time. All you're doing there is setting yourself up for burnout and frustration. All you have to follow is your state homeschool law. And if you are following that, then you are Gucci. (laughs) So know your state homeschool law. Make sure that you are following it. So then how do you find it? Well, the best way to find it is to do a Google search for insert your state here, homeschool law. Honestly, so I live in Missouri, so I'm going to Google Missouri homeschool law. Now you're going to see a lot of different things come up. Probably one of the first things that comes up is a link to HSLDA. That is the Homeschool Legal Defense Association. And you can certainly get on their website and you can see what the state homeschool law says for your state. But first you have to give them your email. So if you are okay with that, then by all means, type your email in, go to the HSLDA website and look and see what they have there for your state homeschool law. Other things that you might see when you do that Google search are organizations in your state that help homeschoolers. Um, I think the one in Missouri is called FHE, Families for Home Education, I want to say. 
and you will find those organizations interpretation of the homeschool law and that's a great place to look with a caveat be sure that you are not completely 100 taking their word for it if you want to read somebody's interpretation of your state homeschool law totally fine but also find the site your state government site that has the homeschool law verbatim word for word exactly as it's written and make sure that you compare that to whatever this organization is telling you because it's important that you are confident in what your state law says not that you are confident in what somebody else says it says <laughs> and then if you're comparing the two and the organization is saying basically the same thing that you're reading then great then you're feeling good about it but don't take somebody else's word for it don't take my word for it don't uh, make sure you're doing the research for yourself because that's where your confidence is going to be if you've seen it for yourself so usually state homeschool laws are going to have your state somewhere in that uh, internet address and then um, the dot at the end might be uh, probably not dot edu probably dot org or dot gov is probably where you're going to find that state homeschool law and yes it's not always going to be easy to read but do read it anyway maybe even print it out for yourself so that you can mark it up and underline and highlight so that you can understand exactly what is required of you state homeschool laws run the gamut from just incredibly vague to very detailed and so you want to be sure that you know what kind of state you're in and exactly what it says always pull up that state homeschool law from the actual government website so that you can see what it says and then yes if you need to compare it to what some organization or blog or website interprets it to mean that's okay too always remember though that this is the only thing you absolutely have to do is that state homeschool law so if you live in one of those states that's very vague kind of loosey-goosey then you have so much freedom even though if you live in one of those states that has a much more specific homeschool law you still have tons and tons of freedom and we'll talk about that in a little bit I just want to mention too that there is an entire chapter about your state homeschool law how to find it and how to interpret it in my book called save your sanity while homeschooling high school and we even look at several examples in here so that you can see exactly how things might be worded and how to better understand them so if you've got any questions after listening to this then definitely look this up I will put a link in the show notes okay so these are the things that you want to look for in that state homeschool law there are several items not every law is going to have information about all of these most don't in fact you just have to look for them to make sure that you're checking that box of knowledge that okay yes I do know whether or not it says about this and I do know what it says about this and I do know that I'm doing what it says about this so here are the things to look for I actually probably should have said this earlier be sure that you are looking at the high school section of this homeschool law if there is a separate one now most states don't have separate requirements for high school than they do for the earlier grades most states have an all-encompassing law that covers all of the grades that makes it super easy but be sure that you know that and that you are looking for a separate section for high school and making sure that there isn't one or if there is one making sure that you're looking at what it says because that's super important if we're talking about high school we need to follow the law for high school if it's different right and that's one thing that all y'all who have been homeschooling for a while might need to do is go back and look at your state homeschool law maybe you know it backwards and forwards as far as homeschooling k through eight but when it comes to high school go back and look and make sure that there isn't something different that you need to be doing now so with all of that in mind we're looking at our state homeschool law we're looking to make sure that we're in the high school section if there is one now we're looking for these things and the first one and probably the most important is what subject areas do you need to cover and that is something that almost every state homeschool law is going to say is yes you need to have English yes you need to have math yes you need to have science they might go into more detail and say well for history there needs to be some American history or some state history I've even seen some that talk about first aid or something um some laws are specific about what you need to cover and other laws are just much more general so again make sure you know what it says about what subject areas need to happen 
And even more specifically than that, how often do these need to happen? You know, a lot of times they'll say you need to cover X subject, but they don't tell you how often. And so all that means is you need to make sure that you've touched on it, but maybe you never need to touch on it again. <laughs> There's so much freedom here, but we do still need to follow what it says. Okay, so subjects to cover, maybe there are some specific courses that are required. What about the number of credits in each subject? Now, credits don't usually come into play before high school, but in high school, credits do come into play. And what does your state homeschool law say about the number of credits that need to happen in each subject? It is a small handful of states that have anything to say about number of credits for each subject, but you might be in one of those, so be sure you're paying attention and finding out what it says about that. And are, is there a specific number of credits overall that needs to be done in order to graduate? Again, only a small handful of states have any discussion about credits. Usually you have the freedom to decide that for yourself, but some states do. So be sure you know whether yours does or doesn't and how many it requires if yours is one of the ones that does. Another big important aspect of the state homeschool law is how many hours you have to be homeschooling or how many days. And often when the state homeschool law refers to the number of days, it defines how many hours make a day. So you can't homeschool for 30 minutes and call it a day, right? Unless your home state homeschool law gives you that flexibility. But most of the time when a state homeschool law says, okay, you need to be in school for X number of days, it'll also say that this many hours constitutes a day. Or in my home state of Missouri, it doesn't talk about days at all, but it does talk about a total number of hours that needs to happen. And so we can split those up however we like, as long as we get the number of hours in. So be sure you know what your state homeschool law says about that. That's kind of like their attendance policy, right? Okay, also you want to know, does your state homeschool law require any type of evaluation? So by evaluation, they could mean one of two things or both. One, do they expect you to be grading your child? Uh, does your child need to be taking quizzes and tests, writing papers, and as being assigned grades for those things? Not every state requires that. The state of Missouri does, and so I do make sure I grade at least a few things. When they were in elementary school, I graded a few things and not a lot of things. In high school, I grade pretty much everything, or at least provide a grade for each course. So look at your state homeschool law and see if you need to be providing grades in some way. If you're an unschooler and you live in a state where you have to provide grades, then that's something you're going to want to figure out for yourself, right? Or the second way they might be talking about evaluation is if they're talking about standardized testing of some sort. So some states do require standardized testing. Some require it at the end of every year just to make sure your kid is learning and tracking with their age level. Some require it every other year or just in certain grades only. Be sure that you know what that requirement is so that you will meet it. Now, the nice thing about high school is that your kid will most likely be taking the ACT or the SAT or the CLT at some point during high school. And so you can use those as those standardized tests and get you know, more bang for your buck because they're taking those tests in order to submit the scores to colleges for applications. So they're going to be doing that anyway. So, hey, yes, this test is also gonna qualify as the standardized test that your state homeschool law requires to make sure that your kid is learning and tracking um, the way the state wants them to. Another thing to look at in your state homeschool law, does it require any kind of portfolio be kept? I'll tell you this right off the bat. Most colleges don't need portfolios. So if you're thinking about keeping a portfolio to send in with your kid's college application, don't even mess with that. The only time that might be required and actually would be required is if your kid wants to major in art. Okay, now we need a portfolio of artwork, right? You would need a portfolio if your kid is going to be an art major then or maybe a um what's the other one uh well graphic design sure or architecture but I'm thinking about the clothing fashion design couldn't get it out for a second again there might need to be a portfolio for that type of major but in general don't expect colleges to want a portfolio most of them have no interest in that at all what you might need to keep a portfolio though for is to satisfy your state homeschool law. So in the event that a social worker or someone else wants you to verify that your kid has been learning in your homeschool, you have a way to do that. 
And so I do recommend keeping a few samples of work. Doesn't have to be every single thing they do. You don't have to keep 12 years of homeschool, you know, in a file somewhere. I usually just keep last year's work and let that speak for itself. But again, do just keep a few samples but a portfolio does not have to be this big old scrapbook that you put with pictures and, you know, pretty fonts or anything. No, a portfolio is just a file that you shove some samples of work into. Keep some from the beginning of the year and some from the end of the year to show the progress. That's really all you need to do. If your state homeschool law doesn't require that, then you don't need to do it. So then don't even bother. Another thing that your state homeschool law might have something to say about is reporting. So do you need to tell the local school district that you are a homeschooling family in that district? Here in Missouri, we never had to tell them. We never had to let them know we existed. If you're pulling your kid out of school though, that might be something that you need to do is tell them. Some of them call it a letter of intent. Hey, I'm going to be pulling my kid out of school, so don't send the truant officer after them. We will be homeschooling. If they don't require you to report anything, then don't worry about it. If they do require you to report, don't give them any more information than they've asked for. There's no reason to give them any more information than they've asked for because we are homeschoolers. We're following a different law. We are not required to um, be supervised by the public school district except where we are. <laughs> And that's the last thing that I want to bring up that you want to look for in your state homeschool law is whether you do need some sort of approval for your program from some kind of official. There are some states that do have that. If you're in a state that doesn't have this need to present your program to somebody, but it is a state that does require you to report and tell somebody that you're homeschooling, that's the situation more specifically where I'm saying, okay, report to them that you're homeschooling, but don't give them any more information about how you're doing it than they ask for. But yes, if you're in a state that requires you to lay out your plan for somebody, Obviously, you're going to want to be sure your law, whether your law says that or doesn't say that, and then you're going to want to abide by that each and every year. So just a quick kind of rundown of all the things that you might find in your state homeschool law. Over the last few years, I've learned a lot about what's in there and what's not in there. If I've missed something, definitely write a comment or send me a message and let me know. But those are pretty much the highlights as far as I'm aware. So then... The wonderful thing to know is that after you follow the things in your state homeschool law and done what that requires for everything else, you have absolute freedom to do what you want to do, what you think is best for your teen. So when it comes to choosing curriculum, states don't specify which curriculum you're supposed to use. I know of no homeschool law that tells you what curriculum you have to use. So you can choose anything you want. States don't specify whether it should be online or textbook or unschooling or exploring schooling or unit study, or I'm throwing all these terms out and you may never have heard of some of them and that's okay. The point is you can homeschool mostly how you want to, as long as you are fulfilling the few specifications of your state homeschool law, but that a state homeschool law usually only specifies even in a very few areas and the rest is all up to you. So you still have so much freedom. And that's the beauty of homeschooling is that you can tailor your child's education to them and you can continue to do that even in high school. We'll talk more next time about how to do that. Until then, I hope this has been helpful for you. I know I've been talking really fast, but I'm trying to get you as much information as I can so that you feel fully equipped to start on this journey. It's going to be a fun journey and I know you can do it. So go out there and get started and I'll see you next time. What it says here in my book called While, Save Your Sanity While Homeschooling Homes. <laughs>